Good evening, and welcome to Press Play. I'm your host, Cedric Fisher. Happy Friday. We've had another incredible week of events and festivities. For those of you tuning in to Press Play for the very first time, we are a unique broadcast from the family of programming at Black Video News Network. You can find us at blackvideonews.com, like our Facebook page, Black Book Studios, and you can find this show, all previous shows, as well as future shows on YouTube. Just toss Black Video Network, all one word, no spaces in the search bar. That's Black Video Network, all all one word, no spaces in the search bar. And you can pull up this show. When you find this show, just press play. And while you're there, subscribe to the channel. Okay, we've got some uh, incredible information and a good show this evening. Let's talk about COVID a little bit first. It is continuing to rampage the city and uh, it's back with a vengeance. We are currently at 1,300 cases, positive cases here in in the city. And that just happened yesterday. Uh, 300 fatalities, And again, it's a menace to society. It is disproportionately impacting the African-American community. We want all each and every one of you to listen to the medical experts. Be cautious, careful, pay attention, do the right thing. We understand that there is a community of folks who don't acknowledge that it's even real and that it's a virus. Okay, if that's your mindset, that's fine. Put your mask on anyway, please. Think about the next person. We're trying to get this behind us so we can move on with our lives at some point. Can I get an amen? Uh, The protest, it's still happening in town, across the country, globally. And uh, there are marchers on the streets. There are folks doing their, uh, giving their effort inside of major corporations, marching in the boardroom, if you will. And there's some other creative things happening outside of both of those lanes that we're going to talk about in a minute. Before we introduce our guest this evening, I want to acknowledge two large icons that uh, passed away this week. Of course, the civil rights pioneer, the great John Lewis uh, passed away. And uh, his ceremony and services were uh, broadcast all over the world um, this week. And then, of course, uh, um, former presidential candidate Herman Cain died this week as well. So uh, there's likely more. Those two come to mind and we just want to make sure we uh, pray for their families. And um, uh, we appreciate all the great work that they did to uh, for the African-American community and black people, people in general. So let's get back to the protests. Um, There's some unique things that are going on. And there is an individual in this city who is uh, using his own gift of art to acknowledge and at least pay homage to some of the African-Americans in um, San Antonio here. Uh, and I think he's got some folks that are that African-Americans from around the country. But he decided to pick the African-American male to do some painting renderings. Before I bring him on the show, let me just introduce you to him. Some of you may be familiar with him. In fact, if you're watching and you're local here, you're very familiar with this gentleman. He is an independent marketing consultant and nationally recognized portrait artist nationally recognized portrait artist. He's the founder of Sosa Bromley Aguilar and Associates, now Bromley Communications, which became the largest Hispanic agency in the United States. He's an acknowledged expert in Hispanic consumer and voter behavior. He was named one of the 25 most influential Hispanics in America by Time Magazine. He was a media consultant for Presidents Ronald Reagan, George H.W. Bush, and George W. Bush. 
He has served on the teams of eight national Republican presidential campaigns. That's eight national Republican presidential campaigns. He is the author of Children of the Revolution, How the Mexican Revolution Changed America, and Think and Grow Rich, A Latino Choice, The Americano Dream, How Latinos Can Achieve Success in Business and in Life. And he's co-author of El Vaccaro Riel, The Original American Cowboy. He is a contributing author of Latinos and the Nation's Future, which was edited by Henry Cisneros. He currently serves on the boards of the Cisneros Center, the KIPP Academy of San Antonio, City Year San Antonio, Texans for Education Reform, and the Texans Higher Education Coordinated Board Strategic Planning Committee. All right. He's chaired both the United Way of San Antonio and the San Antonio Symphony, was the executive director for the Grand F- Grassroots Foundation, Matt, Mexicans and Americans Thinking Together. He's a member of the Texas Business Hall of Fame. And in 2001, he was a fellow at the Institute of Politics at Harvard University and awarded in an honorary Ph.D., in humanities from the University of Incarnate Word. His portraits in oil have been exhibited at the Smithsonian Museum in Washington, D.C., the George H.W. Bush Presidential Library at College Station, Texas, and at Texas A&M University, among others. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome Mr. Lionel Sosa to Press Play. Welcome to Press Play, Lionel. Oh, thank you so much. It's an honor to be on your show, Cedric. Uh, I love the work that you all are doing. I love your magazine. It is pure class. So congratulations on the job. Thank you. Lionel was Lionel briefly mentioned the magazine. By the way, the up the current issue of Black Life Texas magazine is on a newsstand near you. So go find a copy of it. We did a great piece on um, the protest, and uh, it's a collector's edition. So, Lionel, let's get started by introduce yourself to, other than what I've shared with your bio here, where you're from, um, one of four siblings, just kind of introduce yourself to our viewers. Well, well, I was born here in San Antonio 81 years ago uh, in an area of town that was uh, Primarily Anglo. It's uh, called Prospect Hill. Now it is the deep west side. And uh, my dad had a laundry and cleaner. So we uh, uh, cleaned and pressed clothes for all of our neighbors there. Most of them were Anglo. and uh, it, But it quickly changed to it was a white flag out of uh, uh, what was then Prospect Hill, a very uh, prosperous German and Belgian community. Uh, and it became, as it is now, 100% uh, Hispanic. And it is a very poor neighborhood now. And uh, we've uh, all seen what, uh, uh, you know, how our communities of color have really, really uh, been left behind in so many ways. Uh, so much discrimination and uh, uh, lesser educational opportunities and uh, a a life that is just by default almost uh, has uh, made it very, very, very difficult for us. And uh, and particularly I am finding, and I didn't know this until I got into this, uh, how tough life is for all blacks in general, but particularly for black men. Uh, I was walking down the street uh, near my neighborhood the other day, oh, actually it's been about six or seven weeks ago, and I saw a uh, poster on the window, and it said, you can't be anti-racist unless you are actively Mm anti-racist. And I got to thinking about that, and it almost, and it spoke to me, because it said, I thought, you know, I'm anti-racist, or at least I think I am, but I've never been actively 
entitled. I've never done anything. And I wonder what it is that I could do. And uh, for the last uh, four years, I've had an office on the east side of town on Montana and Pine. And I've been becoming more and more aligned with the black community, more aware of things that are going on on the east side. Uh, and when it came time to sell that home a few months ago, a couple of months ago, uh, my realtor, a very well-known realtor and community activist here, uh, by the name of Brendan Logan, uh, came to me with a prospective buyer, uh, a fellow by the name of Simo Battle, who is an executive at uh, Loro, Lobo Black. And uh, I uh, started talking to them about this, and boy, did they have stories. And uh, the first words out of Brandon's mouth was, well, let me tell you about the daily struggle of living in my skin. Mm. And the daily struggle of living in my skin. There was a title for the show already. I told him, what do you think if I were to paint portraits of black men and then tell their stories in a video, in a documentary, and have it be a show in an important museum in San Antonio, just taking San Antonio. And the reason for that is that in San Antonio, I think we believe that we're a, a, a multicultural city, and we are in many ways. Uh, we, uh, you know, we have Hispanic roots, we were discovered uh, by the Canary Islanders from Spain and so forth, and we were named uh, San Antonio, San Antonio, not St. Anthony, and uh, it's there for a reason. The, His the, the Hispanic community is about 63-64% of the entire population, and the black community is all uh, is 8%, uh, uh, and yet we have the largest MLK march in the country, Yeah. Uh, and, and we have, uh, we've had a black mayor in a city with only 8% population, so okay, yeah. that makes us think, well, you know, we understand we're better than other cities. We're not New York. We're not Atlanta. We're not Miami. We treat people equally here. But do we? Do we really? Let's, let us ask some black men here. And they are telling me stories that are blowing my mind. Stories that I know. Okay. Have. So you're going to be doing 30 renderings? Of African American men, yes, thirty renderings of, uh, of black men in San Antonio. In, in San Antonio, mm -hmm. and you have how many done thus far? Uh, I, I've got thirteen done so far. Thirteen. Okay, we're yeah. we're looking behind your your head there, and on your wall, a um, couple of those faces are recognizable. You want to just kind of introduce us to what we see? Yeah, well, that is a good longtime friend of mine, Reggie Williams. And uh, Reggie, Reggie. Uh, you know, everybody knows him here in San Antonio. He's been uh, president of the Rotary Club. He was the captain of his all white football team when he was in Ohio. He is a commissioned officer in the U.S. military, and he was uh, in. The first, one of the first uh, executive directors for the San Antonio Area Foundation. And yet, that story is that you won't believe. The next one is uh, Daryl Bird, uh, one of the architects of the wonderful Coral uh, development near downtown that has heard uh, all kinds of uh, 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 building and job creation and so forth. And uh, he is an independent consultant that when you hire uh, Daryl Bird to do consulting for you, you hire me very, very good. And then over here is a young man by the name of Dario Davis, who is my next door neighbor uh, in uh, on Montana Street. And he uh, he wanted to have his painted his uh, in portrait painting with his COVID mask on. So I'm actually doing two portraits of him, one with his mask off and the other one with his mask on. 
but uh, I do have uh, 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 about, I think it's 13 or 14 of them completed, and I'm taking pictures of uh, what the subjects do. They, they come in, we talk for a little while, I take a few pictures. Uh, I have to take the picture. I don't want anybody to take them for me. Uh, mm -hmm. I take the picture uh, so that I can have different attitudes, you know, an attitude that could be of pride or an attitude that could be of, of resentment or of anger or of happiness of all of the types of uh, emotions that a black man goes through, the type of personality and character and the different characters of people that, that we have. So I'm getting to know stories that I never knew uh, existed, and I want them to know those stories because we don't know each other as well as we could know each other, and I, and I know that now. And we can have better understanding only by getting to know each other better, becoming better friends, and embracing our communities and our commonalities. Absolutely. That's, that's very good. So here, here's a big question, Lionel. We, we know you're an accomplished artist. I've seen your portfolio. I've got some great renderings, a lot of um, cultural renderings from the Hispanic community. Of course, that's probably your, your greatest familiarity. What motivated you? When did you get the, the itch, the, the idea that you wanted to focus specifically on the African-American male? Was it someone in your space? What are your circles? Um, you've been the, the media kind of influenced it maybe with the George Floyd situation, what, what, what was it? Well, you know, I mean, once we saw that video of George Floyd, uh, it was, and not just George Floyd, it, so many videos that we're seeing uh, in, in almost on a daily basis. Uh, I saw one a couple of years ago, a policeman, I think it was in Dallas, actually, uh, uh, coming after young uh, black women, uh, I think they were coming out of high school or something, and tackling them and putting them to the ground and so yeah, forth. And I remember that. Anything. You remember that one? Sure, that was, absolutely. It was just, my God, how can this be happening today? Uh, one of the things that's going to be in the show that I think is very, very important is there was a... Uh, a, uh, a, a black uh, writer uh, and a black, uh, he, he was a, a, an author, he was a poet, he, he, he was a, 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 he wrote plays back after emancipation in the 1800s. And his name was uh, Dun, uh, Dunbar. Dunbar, there's lots of people know about him, lots, most people don't know about him. But he was the first black man that made his living by uh, writing. As a writer. Off hmm. of several books of hundreds of poems. He died very, very young uh, at the age of 36, I believe. Uh, and he could have done so much more. But yet his writings were so popular that they made him a living, and one of his plays actually got produced not only in New York, but in London as well. So he was a scholar and a very uh, incredible man, and he wrote about his story, about being pulled over for no reason. Today, every black man has a story of being pulled over for no reason. I don't think I've talked to anybody that hasn't been pulled over for no reason. And it's a story of every, how little they, things have changed in the past 130 years. Here is this man talking about his life and how tough it was in the late 1800s. And here are men today in a sophist, supposedly sophisticated city like San Antonio telling the very same stories today. Not much has changed nor progressed. Yeah. We're going to take a break. You're watching Press Play with Mr. Lionel Sosa. We'll be right back. Hi there. This is Terry with Frost. Good evening. This is Franklin. This is Robert with Frost. Hello. This is Rosemary with Frost Bank.
one, six, or a dozen trees, no job is too big or too small. Booker's Tree Services is a certified arborist and state licensed company. On the ground or in the air, we are here to take care of all your tree needs from stump grinding, tree pruning, tree trimming, tree removal, and much more. Call the professionals to help manage your commercial or residential needs. Don't let your trees make you nervous. Call for a free estimate today at Booker Tree Service, 1 in 3 adults has prediabetes. Take the risk test at doihaveprediabetes.org. Because of you, I feel not alone in this world. And you let me know that it only takes one person to make you feel wanted. One in three adults has prediabetes. That means it could be you, your favorite brother, your other brother. Yes. You, your football buddy, your football buddy. You, your plumber. Breathe right into your foot. Your plumber's masseuse. Yes. You, your dog walker, your cat jogger. With early diagnosis, prediabetes can be reversed. Take the risk test at doihaveprediabetes.org. Does your life matter? Education, health, and finance can determine your future and explain your past. Pick up the latest edition of Black Life Texas Magazine, a monthly outlook on life with an African-American focus. Life is what you make it, so live it in the black. Welcome back to Press Play. I'm your host, Cedric Fisher. We are, uh, to, tonight we have with us Mr. Lionel Sosa, who is a nationally recognized portrait artist. He's doing a unique rendering of African-American men. It'll be 30 uh, portraits when he's all done. He currently has 20. And uh, we've been having a great conversation with Lionel about how we got motivated to take on a project like this. And we'll, got, we'll, we'll have some questions at the very end of the segment, which kind of revisit some of the art that he currently has. Uh, but let's talk about your political career a little bit, Lionel. You obviously have helped uh, several campaigns along the way. What motivates you and motivated you initially to even get involved in politics and campaigning and exclusively for the Republican Party? Well, you know, I've uh, I've always uh, been interested in, you know, a, a, as an observer in, in politics, and uh, my parents were very uh, uh, taught us to be responsible in the community and to always go out and vote and to really research the the, the people that you believe in yourself. And he raised us <clears throat> as Latinos, you know, to to work hard to be close to family, to have faith in God, to look for opportunities and to be responsible for yourself uh, and to do the very best and hardest work that you could possibly do. Well, those are very conservative values and those are the values of Latinos. Even though Latinos vote primarily as Democrats, we have very conservative values. So. Uh, when I was 13 years old, the 1952 convention was going on TV, uh, and uh, a fellow by the name of Dwight Eisenhower was running for president. And I loved his speeches because they sounded just like my father. And I said, uh, Dad, when I'm old enough to vote, I'm going to vote Republican. And he said, oh, my God, you can't do that. Uh, you're a Democrat. I said, well, why am I a Democrat? He said, because... The Democrats are for the poor, and we are poor. Hmm. And 
And so what about the republic as well? The republicans are the party of the rich. And I said to them at age 30, well, I want to be rich, not poor. Therefore, I am a Republican. And they just about died. They never got over it, you know. To the day they died, they were, they were just, it, it was just, to them it was horrible that I was uh, a Republican. And But I never t- intended to go into Republican politics until I got a call from a fellow who was running for re-election back in 1978 by the name of John Tower. Uh, we, uh, he said, we'd like for you to, to do our campaign. He said, why? We've never done a political campaign. He said, well, I like your work. At the time, I was partners with three other folks. Uh, two of us were white, two of us were Latino, and we had a terrific ad agency uh, that was doing some wonderful work. They loved our work, and two of you were Latino. We're going to need the Latino vote, so uh, we're, we want to hire you. So they hired us. It was the biggest account we ever had. Uh, Tower won by one half of one percent, and it was attributed to the fact that he turned the Latino uh, vote from eight percent that usually voted for Republicans to 37 percent. And because of the Latino, he vote he won. Uh, the Latino support he won. So uh, John Tower called the Wall Street Journal, and he told him, "Here's a fellow that helped me get elected. I want you to do a story on him." And they did. So uh, you know, about three weeks later, there I was on the front page of the marketing section of the Wall Street Journal. At that time, there used to be little drawings of. Uh, of people, they had my drawing there, and uh, it told about uh, the wonderful outreach to Latinos. And in three months, uh, we all the corporate people started coming to us: Coca Cola, Coors Beer, the Party Rum, and they were just giving us the business because of this one article, and we. Mm-hmm. Went from a tiny little ad agency to a gigantic agency. Then Senator Tower introduced me to Ronald Reagan, and Ronald Reagan said, "Yeah, I will hire you to do my Latino outreach." From there, just Papa Bush. I, we did the two campaigns in 1980, 1984, and then the two campaigns for uh, the elder Bush, and then the two campaigns for uh, for uh, George W. Bush, but. It was a Republican that was very different from Donald Trump. To me, those Republicans represented my values. Ronald Reagan gave amnesty to three million Mexicans that were working in the U.S. when he was president, and he did that in 1983. Uh, George W. Bush talked about the 100 points of light in a kinder, gentler nation. And George W. Bush uh, was the compassionate conservative. Uh, and then all of a sudden, uh, this man, crazy man, Donald Trump, starts running for president. And coming right out of the box, he calls Mexicans rapists and murderers. And I couldn't believe that I was hearing a presidential candidate utter these words. And we know what's happened since then. He's divided this country. I think he has caused a lot of this uh, racial strife. I think he just uh, loves to, he wishes that this country was the way it might have been when he was a kid, mostly white, but it's not that way anymore. Uh, this country is, has always been a country of immigrants. This country has, uh, has been a country that always welcomes the, the underdog to a large extent, or at least tries to. Uh, and he is, uh, uh, I think a lot of the problems that we are facing today, maybe they're just surfacing more today because he's keeps uh, fanning the flame. Uh, we're, we're at a terrible place, I believe. 
So you're 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 currently with the Lincoln Project. I am. If I understand. Tell yes, us sir. a little bit about that. Well, group. Lincoln Project is made up mostly of disgruntled Republicans, uh, like me. You know, people who are Rep that don't want to give up being a Republican. I, I don't want to say, okay, I'm no longer a Republican. I don't want to say. I am now an independent. I don't want to say now I am a, uh, a Democrat. <clears throat> Most of my friends are Democrats. If, in fact, in San Antonio, if your friends are Democrats, you're not going to have friends, you know. So this is a, a community that gets along politically. You know, Henry Cisneros, all the, 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 the wonderful uh, Democrats that I respect are my friends, and we respect each other's face and so forth. So, but there is no way that I can support a man just because I'm a, a, like Trump, just because of, I'm a Republican. Mm -hmm. So, therefore, the Lincoln Project, if you look them up and you look at their ads, and you look at today's ad, it will blow your mind. Uh, it is an ad that talks about Trump's desire we want to push back the election, you know, and uh, that, that's that's 60 seconds really worth watching. They, they put together beautiful ads, uh, and their whole thing is make sure that Trump does not get reelected. And uh, but uh, the, they're also going out after uh, the um, the Republican senators who are their, uh, his enablers, you know. Uh, and uh, we, we uh, so uh, we've got more money. Money is just coming in faster than they can spend it. That means that there's a lot of Republicans like me that are so ashamed of this president that we have to do everything that we can to get rid of them. So the Lincoln Project is made up of Republicans who want to hold on and maintain that party affiliation, yes. but not happy with some of the Republican leaders and on a mission to make sure they don't get reelected, not just the president. Not just the president, but uh, others as well, other senators as well, and they've targeted uh, several different uh, senators. Uh, and uh, so, uh, you know, because, you know, they don't, they see bad things happening and they're not doing anything about it and I think uh, they've got to be held accountable too for enabling uh, such madness to go on. Okay, very interesting. Let's transition back to the art. This great rendering of African American men and again a lot of faces that the African American community locally here is familiar <laughs> with. Why don't you take us through some of the other portraits that you have uh, painted thus far? Well, I am looking for people. I am looking for people. You're looking for people. Okay. Yes. I'm specifically looking for a black policeman. Well, all of them are black. I'm specifically looking for a police policeman. I want a couple of uh, young men uh because to see how they're preparing for the future and what their attitudes are. Maybe one as young as 8 or 10, maybe another one about 16 years old. I am looking for a gay man. I am looking for a transsexual man. I am looking for uh, uh, people that uh, are retired as working men all their lives and never were able to achieve what they could have achieved if the, if the, uh, if the, if we had a level playing field. And I, and I've already got a lot of the ones who achieved regardless, you know, uh, people like Cedric F Fisher that do well and continues to do well. Uh, uh, people like Daryl Bird. So I want to, I want to have about half of the people being achievers and half of the people being potential uh, achievers and then those who got left behind and i want them all to tell their stories because i'm going to do that in the documentary the documentary is a, 
probably more important than the paintings themselves because that's when we're going to tell the stories. That's when they're going to talk about their parents, their grand grandparents, their favorite relative, uh, the the good things in life, the terrible things in life, and all of the ups and downs that they have had. And uh, the joys that they experiences and the sadness that they've experienced. And uh, I want to show all the emotion. That's fantastic. We can uh, certainly help you with finding candidates. We reach every sector of this African-American community. There are over 500,000 of us in Central Texas here, Lionel. Mm -hmm. So we can help you with that. And even perhaps we can help you with the documentary at some point. Um, well, that, why don't you show us a, f a few more I of the renderings that are, that are uh, a part of this lineup? Uh, well, uh, th or did you move your location? No, I, I'm uh, I'm I'm right here. I, I'm in my studio right now. This is the place where I paint. Uh, and uh, do you want me to move on, over to the other section of the studio right now? Yeah, we got a few minutes here. Let's go ahead and show a few more. Of, okay. Uh, the paintings, uh, I'll, I'll if, if you don't mind. Uh, this is kind of the front entrance to the studio. Here are, are more portraits. I, I hope I'm pointing it in the right direction. They look good, uh, sure. Lionel? Did we lose you? We see the paintings. We just can't hear your voice. Yeah, he may not be in front of his computer. His paintings look fantastic. Let's see, he should come back to us momentarily here. Uh, and this is my neighbor. Uh, in South Down, uh, Keith Stimson, who owns a, uh, a juice, ja, uh, juice shop. And this is uh, the unmasked portrait of, th these are in plastic because I've got them already uh, to store uh, between now and the show. Uh, Dario Davis, this young man is a musician who records in, in, uh, in, uh, in uh, Nashville. And then I've done some other, you know, they're not Latino, uh, fellow here that walked into a restaurant uh, was one day, this lady that was uh, the housekeeper when we spent some time in Mexico, and on and on. So uh, I just love to paint portraits, and uh, uh, there's one of my wife, Kathy, over there, one of Kathy Lawton, Kathy's restaurant. Uh, and uh, so... Uh, you know, it's something that I've enjoyed doing all my life, and I'm glad that I'm being able to do it now in something that I hope will tell a story that is not often heard. That's fantastic, Lionel. You obviously have a phenomenal gift, and uh, I appreciate an artist. Uh, journalists are artists as well. We just use a different tool. So um, right. I, I, I want to ask you this question. We... And I ask every interview we ever guest on to show this same question. We have the privilege here of interviewing a lot of great leaders, people who are doing some real significant work, dynamic things from um, various verticals and vocations and <laughs> industries. Um, they're all leaders and they can be moguls, many moguls, moguls in the making, uh, just, you know, good leaders. One thing they all seem to have in common is they love to read. And uh, they each have a go-to book uh, that they refer to. They may only pick that book up every year or every couple years, but they have a book that they count on for ideas, motivation, stimulation, inspiration. That book is typically found on their nightstand, Lionel. Mm -hmm. What's on your nightstand, Lionel? Well, you know, uh, the book that changed my life when I was... Uh, about 26 years old, 25 years old, uh, was a book uh, uh, that was written 
uh, 83 or 84 years ago called Think and Go Rich by Napoleon Hill. And that. That, are you familiar with Think and Go oh, Rich? Absolutely. Yeah. After 80 plus years, it continues to sell millions of copies in every language around the world. Uh, and it is really uh, a book about uh, what Napoleon Hill did is he combined the 17 principles of personal achievement is what uh, he called what, what his philosophy was. Uh, he spent uh, uh, more than 20 years of his life interviewing uh, the most successful man uh, of his time. And he was introduced by Andrew Carnegie. A Andrew Carnegie actually hired him to do this uh, and uh, introduced him to all of these folks. And then he spent 20 years interviewing presidents of the United States and uh, leaders of industry and so forth. Thomas Edison and Henry Ford and on and on. And Outstanding book. Outstanding book. Yeah, there was, Absolutely. There was. Lionel, we got one minute left. Just okay. what can we do to help you out? How do we contact you? Okay. Uh, I have uh, my email address is uh, Lionel underscore Sosa at me.com. That's M-E dot com. That's L-I-O-N-E-L underscore S-O-S-A at me, M-E, dot com, and uh, email me, and we'll get together, and give me your information, your phone number, how you could help, and I'm, I'm there for you. Okay, Lionel, we want to say thank you for coming on Press Play this evening. Nationally renowned artist doing a super portfolio and uh, documentary on the African-American male experience. You guys stay tuned. Thank you for coming on Press Play. You know, you can find us again on YouTube, Black Video Network, all one word in the space bar, space bar, excuse me. And of course, while you're there, subscribe. And if you can find this show, just scroll down and press play. We'll be back next week with a great episode from Press Play. I'm your host, Cedric Fisher. Good night. <laughs>